Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, we're gonna talk about comic books. Um, you might not have heard about this one, though. I severely doubt it'll be joining the MCU. Name is Syndrome, made in 2010. It's, a uh, <laughs> an odd one, to say the least. We'll get into it, and it led to a very strange situation of life imitates art. See, the creator of the comic book, he was, he was such a big fan of his own work. He was his own biggest cheerleader that he decided to make it a reality. So let's give it a go. It's Los Angeles that we're off to right now, right? You know, hold your horses there, Mr. Moneybags, big shot off in Holly Weird. Yeah, it's a LA big whoop. But that's where everyone goes to follow their dreams, so long as those dreams involve fame and glamour. And they certainly did for Blake Liebel. Okay, right, you guys, you know, this story, it's very weird, but it's not set in Canada. But Blake is Canadian, so that explains it. Our boy -o Blake was born in 1981 in Toronto to a well-to-do family, raised in the nice old neighborhood of Forest Hill. He was the younger of two. His parents, Eleanor and Lorne, both were separately rich, of course, of course they wear old sport. His mom, Eleanor, she was the daughter of a plastic sheeting tycoon. I know, right? Who hasn't, you know, heard of Polytar Products Limited? His dad, Lorne, who he wasn't, he wasn't particularly close with, Blake, by the way. See, Lorne and Eleanor, they split up when the kids were young. Blake lived with his mother, Blake's brother Cody, with his dad. So Blake's dad was, as I said, wealthy in his own right. He had sailed for Canada in the Olympics, he was big into car racing, and then he developed a shitload of homes in and outside of Toronto in like the 80s and 90s, so... So that was the world Blake came from. Little dysfunctional, his granddad was a real piece of work. Blake's granddad wrote in his will that before you can get your inheritance, you have to take a HIV test. But well, you know, who cares, because they were rich. So Blake lived the privileged life, and in the 2000s, when he was in his 20s, he moved with his buddies, also rich of course, to LA. His brother Cody was already trying, and somewhat succeeding, somewhat failing, to make a name for himself with record labels, and in the poker scene, rubbing elbows with the Russian mob. While Blake, he was going to be the artiste, the creator of worlds. Oh man, he's going to make such good art, going to be big. And while entrenching himself in the creative juices of LA, you know, making the connections, networking, doing all that kind of stuff, he did create. He did create. Absolute shite. I'm 20 years old and I'm losing all of my hair. Come in. I can't live like this anymore. What do you need money for? So that I can get a hair transplant. You let a doctor cut open your head? Not just any doctor. I want the guy who did Matthew McConaughey. Here's Bald from 2008, directed by Blake Liebel. Max, I'm gonna kick your ass. I'm going bald, OB. So, I had my first heart attack while playing with myself. That's not so bad. My mom and her bridge club found me. I've once had 13 orgasms. Tired. I'll suck your dicks in. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're giving a bald man a second chance. Bald on three. Bald. Wow, what a hoot that movie looks like, and I'm sure the cast, looking back, would agree. I think you can find it on Prime if you want to ruin your day. It wasn't widely reviewed because it wasn't widely released. So thanks, Blake. He also worked on Spaceballs, the animated series. How come I've never been down here before? We remodeled, sir. The bowels used to be on the main floor, not down here, but that didn't make any sense. So we changed the bowels. So you moved your bowels. Hmm. How long did that take? Months. <laughs> I know nothing about animation, but that looks terrible. Again, you can find a few episodes on YouTube if you want to be mildly annoyed or even worse. 
Ford. Hmm. So far, Blake is knocking it out of the park and into the dump. What else did he create during his rampage of creativity? Here's an appearance from Blake at the New York Comic Con in 2008. And we are here with United Free Worlds. You are a comic book company. Yes. That has an amazing book out right now. And it's actually a little bit, di well, you say that it's a little bit different from everybody else out here. And why is that? Our work is slightly different because we take more time in making the artwork a higher quality. We take a very extreme detail, it's very serious to us. And I guess that's what sets us above everyone else is that we like to take the time to really put in the extra effort. Because this isn't school, there's no reason to rush this or do it the night before. That's true. He seems like, well, you can tell the interviewers are trying to wrap this up as quickly as possible. That's true. Tell us a little bit about the storyline. The storyline is about when a new planet enters our solar system, the Earth unites and we put down our weapons and we find a new enemy that's about 12 to 18 feet and they ride and control dinosaurs like dogs. And when we go to war, they absolutely annihilate us the first time. To give you a small example, 50 pterodactyls connected to a big net open up and swallow in about 400 helicopters, carry them into the sky, and then cut that net like it was nothing and let that bag of helicopters fall to the ground. Now imagine, for a moment, being inside of that bag of helicopters. What would that look like? How would you feel? I'd probably be dead. Actually, holy shit, that sounds right. And then one tribe has an equal balance between men and women, and from them come the greatest warriors and the most successful tribesmen, which says a little parallel into real life, which is that a mum and dad are very nice. <laughs> and are you the creator yourself? Yes. So that was one comic book. <laughs> Dinosaurs, always a winner. Yes. But there's another one uh, I'd, I'd like to talk to you about. Name of Syndrome. It was released in 2010, and it goes a little something like this. Part of the introduction goes, whoever is in charge is the slave. They answer to, we the people, the ambivalent environment, unknown groups, and lastly, themselves. We, the alleged slave, are the boss. It, it kind of goes on and on. Whoa, dude, that's deep. The graphic novel centers around a doctor, Dr. Chattel. Funnily enough, Blake's mother, that's her, her maiden name. And this doctor is studying serial killers. The major plot revolves around how this doctor, he's working on this big project. He hires, he hires loads of actors to live in this fake town. Then he fakes a serial killer's execution so he can experiment on him, wipes his mind, and then lets him loose in the fake town so he can study him. Imagine a Truman Show, but uh, Jim Carrey is a serial killer. He's basically trying to cure killers by giving them, well, empathy. Because, as he says, evil is not some mysterious force operating out there in the universe. Evil is a syndrome. Whoa, that's the title. What would a cure for that be worth? There is a lot of blood and bodies in it. Whoa, it's like the that foreshadowing, you know, people go on and on about. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, so while he was uh, doing all this creating, Blake married. In 2011, he married a former model named Amanda Braun, and she would give birth to a son a month after they tied the knot. Together, they lived in Beverly Hills, baby, seeing how the other half, which is them, uh, lived. But shockingly, these bits and bobs, you know, Blake was creating, they weren't exactly flying off the shelves. Uh, Bald wasn't a number one hit. I don't know why not. Blake wasn't exactly making, you know, Boku books over there, he, but he was living the high life, so he was spending like he was. These projects cost a lot, on paper at least, and he was financing them via the bank of mom and dad. This stressed him out, as you can imagine. He also had a big old weed habit who wasn't exactly punctual or reliable. And darker content was more and more his cup of tea. Bring back the dinosaurs. Yes. The shit really hit the fan when Eleanor, uh, Blake's mother, passed away in 2011. This devastated him. They were they were close. Oh, he was closer to her bank account. He received millions when she passed. Millions he quickly pissed away. So much so that in 2013 he sued to have her will overturned, so we could get a few dollars more. 
he was broke. His attempt to overturn the will failed, and he then owed more money to the lawyers. It was in the spring of 2015 that Blake spiraled further. He left his wife, Amanda Braun, who was eight months pregnant. He stopped returning calls to friends and family, and it seemed like the entertainment industry, Hollywood, whatever, it chewed him up and spat him out. Now, while this weirdness was going on, his, he just up and left his wife, you know, they were in the process of divorce, other friends would say, he was actually not doing so bad. He was still close with his son and was working on a new project, a comic called Psychopomp. It seemed like it was maybe just like a little breakdown he had, one he had kind of been building up towards after his mother passed, and then he was, you know, true and on the other side. He met someone new, Ayanna Kassian, a former tax lawyer from Kiev, Ukraine. She moved to LA and was becoming a translator when she met Blake. Blake keeps punching above his weight. Though he would later say uh, that he always thought women were just interested in him for his money. I'm kind of racking my brains to see his other positive qualities. How would you feel? And they seemed very happy together. So happy that Ayanna herself would become pregnant within a couple of months. She gave birth in May 2016. However, Blake had other worries than money. His brother Cody, who played poker with the Mafia, maybe he was in debt to the wrong people. Blake was stressing out about his brother, so he calmed his nerves by seeing another woman while he was divorcing his first wife and his new girlfriend had just given birth. What a guy. I guess we're the real winners here though, because he didn't have time to work on his art. However, roughly two weeks after Ayanna gave birth, Blake's new, new girl accused him of sexual assault. He was arrested and spent 15 hours in jail before posting the $100,000 bail. Ayanna was not best pleased, as you can imagine. She took the baby, moved out of their condo and down to a rental unit a couple of blocks away. Her mother Olga was visiting from Ukraine helping with the Baba so she was there too. And Blake was not pleased in return. He demanded Diana move back in with him, sans baby. This came to a head on the 23rd of May. Blake told her to come over to his condo. Diana left her baby with her mother, and so she went. And that was that. The next day, Olga still hadn't heard from Diana. So she was, you know, she called the police to ask them to go and check on them because she couldn't get in when she was over there knocking on the door, trying to, she couldn't get through like the, the gate. They weren't much help, even though she was knocking on the door, shouting, trying to get in, even after seeing Blake through the window on his third floor condo. When one occupant left, she managed to book it inside. And after knocking, 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 she called the police once more. This time they came but there was nothing they could do. They couldn't exactly kick down the door. They knocked, no answer. All right, you know, there's no like blood leaking through, you know, under the door, we can't hear any screaming. They just left him a nice little voicemail. Hello, this message is from Blake Libel from the West Hollywood Sheriff's Station here at your apartment and we need to speak to you immediately, sir. I want uh, to uh, get my daughter out of that apartment safely. I want to open the doors to break into that apartment and get my daughter out. It's been three weeks uh, since she had a C-section and she needs to, uh, she needs doctor's attention. Okay, this is what I'll do. Tell her I will send deputies to do a welfare check to see if she is uh, there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, she won't open the door. They already tried to do that and they tried to open, they tried to knock, but he doesn't open, he won't open the door. Okay, we'll do another welfare check and we will call her to let her know the outcome, and then we'll go from there as far as possibly doing a missing persons report. Yes, ma'am, when are you going to go there? Because your life is in danger. We're going as soon as we hang up. It was on the 26th of May, Ayanna hadn't been seen since the 23rd, that Olga once again was banging on the door and called the police. 
And this time they decided, okay, enough time has passed. She just gave birth. We should find her. They got a key from the building manager, but the door was latched from the inside. So someone was there and they kicked it down. The hallway door was locked and barricaded. And as they moved through the condo, they called out to no response. And that's when they began to see blood. The door to the master bedroom was also barricaded. It was barricaded with a mattress. And Blake shouted out from behind it, basically telling them, telling the police that Anna wasn't there. And fuck off. A friend of Blake's arrived, his accountant, and convinced him to open the door to the police, which he did. As he came out in his tidy whities the police found he had his passport and four grand in cash with him. It seemed like he may be trying to flee back to his native Canada. There was blood everywhere. Ayanna was on the bed. Blake was covered in scratches, bruises, bites. Ayanna, a hell of a lot more. Micah Sher, it's been about 10 hours since that body was discovered this morning. And as you can see right behind me, investigators are still on scene. We spoke with neighbors earlier about what they heard. Arguing, like screaming, but it wasn't a back and forth. It was just like a girl, like, I don't know. It was just crazy. It was very scary. Some people heard screaming, I guess. They didn't know exactly what it was. They thought it was music. Neighbors say there was a lot of commotion coming from the area of the condo complex where a woman was found Thursday beaten to death inside her unit. Authorities say they initially responded to the building on Holloway Drive near La Cienega Boulevard around 11:30 a.m. after the victim's mother asked them to do a welfare check. She hadn't seen her daughter for a day or so and called West Hollywood Station to report her missing. When sheriff's deputies showed up at the door, they heard noises in the in the uh, apartment. Concerned, they forced entry and came into contact with the victim's live-in boyfriend and father of her child. He was ag agitated and, and uncooperative. Authorities say he tried to stop deputies. He had barricaded himself in the apartment, uh, you know, had placed um, furniture and bedding all around the, the uh, department to prevent, or the apartment to prevent us from entering. Let me just read you this section of the autopsy. It's gruesome. Cassian's entire scalp was traumatically absent and was not found, was not present with the body. Her skull had been stripped down to the surface of the bone. There was no scalp present except for little bits on the back of the neck. Portions of the right side of her face were torn away, including the right ear and part of the posterior face on the right side all the way down to the jawline. There were quite a number of bruises and abrasions on the face, including one which turned out to be a human bite mark. She had lived for at least eight hours approximately after receiving the scalp injury and the bruise to the collarbone. I have never seen this before, and I doubt if hardly any forensic pathologists in this country or abroad have ever seen this outside of, perhaps, wartime. It is extremely rare. Blake was arrested, and he denied having anything to do with the woman who was traumatically murdered in his apartment. The entire condo was covered in blood, but it wasn't readily apparent. Blake had tried to clean up. When Luminol came in, it lit the shit up. It was blood loss that killed Diana. He had used a razor and his hands to cut and rip her apart. They had fought and Blake had done this throughout the, the entire condo. And it took about eight hours for her to die. Blake, as I said, he had tried to clean up with the police taking a dozen bags from the dumpster filled with cleaning supplies and clothing. In June 2018, Blake went on trial. He's being called the graphic novel killer. Prosecutors say a comic book he created depicted a chilling murder that foreshadowed his own fiance slaying. And I've seen some gruesome crimes and this is one of the most gruesome. Syndrome came up for the prosecution saying that the murder it was styled after that, from the scalping to the blood loss. This illustration from the novel shows the murder victim on a blood-soaked mattress. And this police photo from the real life crime scene 
also shows a bloody map. The character tells a waitress, I am filthy, stinking rich, just like Libel, who comes from a wealthy family. The prosecution argued he was jealous of the attention she gave to her new daughter, and so, I mean, if the defense managed to get a not guilty out of this, that would be impressive. It would also be impossible. Sadism is the gratification, obviously, from the infliction of pain and suffering on another. And we know that in this case, the defendant obviously enjoyed it because he continued to do it for hours and hours. He showed zero emotion following his murder conviction. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of the crime of torture. At his sentencing yesterday in Los Angeles, the victim's grieving mother, who's from Ukraine, spoke through an interpreter. I never thought that one day my life would be broken, that it would turn into hell and endless suffering. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. An appeal in 2020 was denied. It's interesting that he worked on a graphic novel about a doctor trying to, like, install empathy in killers, when that was something Blake obviously lacked. He tortured his, the mother of his child for eight hours. He even ordered food while she was bleeding out, while he was torturing her. The doctor in the book was named after his mother. And maybe this was something he saw in himself, trying to cure evil. And what would a cure for that be worth? Well, write about what you know. Right? Yes. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate you taking the time. And sure, go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next video. Please, here, look after yourselves. Take care. Mike out.